The U.S. Surgeon General released a 2020 report on smoking cessation, urging Americans to stop smoking and its risks. I'll place a link to that in the description. But it kind of took a backseat when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So today I want to give you a quick synopsis of the medications that we currently have available for smoking cessation so that you can have the knowledge and tools to discuss with your doctor at your next visit. You don't want to miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Madge. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. As of date, there are seven medication options that are FDA approved to help with smoking cessation, and one medication, electronic cigs, which are not FDA approved. So here's what I'd want my own patients to know about all eight options before making a decision. Here we go. Nicotine replacement therapy. Now they are used to mitigate the withdrawal symptoms without including all the other chemicals that are found in cigarettes to be harmful. This category actually includes five of the eight medication options and they are patches, gum, and lozenges, which are available over the counter and easily accessible to you without requiring a visit to your doctor. Inhalers and nasal sprays, which are available only via prescription. Now combining the long acting patch along with the short acting gum or lozenge has been shown to be more effective with smoking cessation than using a single type of nicotine replacement. Side effects that I usually hear about are mainly gastrointestinal like nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and then sometimes I do hear headaches also. Now dosing is dependent on the quantity of the cigarettes that you're smoking currently and then you taper it down from there. So for instance, for those who are opting for the patch, if you smoke over 10 cigarettes a day and you weigh over 45 kilos, then the highest dose patch is recommended for six weeks using the 21 milligram per day dose. Then 14 milligram per day for two weeks from then on, and then seven milligrams per day for two weeks. Now, if using less than or equal to 10 cigarettes a day, or if you weigh less than 45, kilograms, then you can start at 14 milligrams per day for six weeks and then go to seven milligrams per day for two weeks. Note that these regimens can be stretched out over a long time period than just 10 weeks if necessary. I mean, you can just tailor it to whatever it is that you need it to do. Bupropion. This is our sixth option and it's a prescription medication that reduces cravings and withdraws and it also is prescribed as an antidepressant. So that's an added feature for those who may also be suffering from depression at the same time. It is generic and less costly and more easily accessible, I would say, although it is prescription, than brand drugs used for smoking cessation. It comes in two doses, so you can start at the lower dose and then it can be increased through time if, ne if needed. Now, it should be initiated about two weeks before your quit date. Abruptly quitting seems to be more effective, but gradually reducing the smoking is still acceptable during treatment if it's necessary. But either way, it is recommended for at least 12 weeks. The most common side effect that I hear from people that take bupropion is insomnia. And this is because it tends to be activating and energizing. But it may be good for those who are generally just like really low energy and tired. It also suppresses the appetite, so it may help in those who are worried about weight gain as a complication of smoking cessation. And this is a common concern that I hear from patients. It is contraindicated in those with a history of seizure disorders as it can lower the threshold for seizures in those patients. So varenicline. I'll be using the generic names of drugs as I always do because for those of you who know me personally know that I have zero affiliations or contact with pharmas in my own practice and on my YouTube channel. Something that I have felt very strongly about since my training days. Now, this is a prescription drug that is available only as brand as of today and higher cost than all the other options that I'm discussing today. It's important to know if your insurance plan will cover it or not before you initiate it. And it may be prudent to consider it only if fa after failing some of the other options that are less costly. It blocks the effect of nicotine on receptors in the reward center of the brain and therefore decreases the cravings of nicotine that leads to dependence. It also helps to decrease withdrawal symptoms. Now, it is recommended to initiate about one to four weeks prior to your quit date and to take a full 12 week course just like bupropion, but it can be continued for an additional 12 weeks in order to reduce 
relapse risk if needed, just like in bupropion. Now, the most common side effects with this one include vivid dreams, insomnia, and nausea. There were initial concerns about an increased risk of depression and suicidal thoughts initially when the drug came out, but the FDA removed the black box warning in 2016 after a large study called the Eagle Study, which I'll place a link to in the description box below, of 8,000 smokers. It showed similar rates of psychiatric events with varinecline, bupropion, the patch, and the placebo. Future studies also confirmed this as well. Now the Eagle study also did show that varinecline to provide a greater chance of successful quitting after six months when compared to all the other methods of placebo. But bupropion and the patch were still more effective than placebo and are still great options. Now there were also concerns over the cardiovascular effects of varinecline, but most of the evidence does not show an increased risk. So it is deemed safe for those with low risk of heart disease so far in studies, but not enough studies to determine how safe it is for those with a high risk of cardiovascular events yet. But it's also important to note that we must weigh the risks of smoking cigarettes with any potential side effects also. So make sure to discuss with your doctor because smoking itself is a risk factor for heart disease. Now electronic cigarettes or e-cigs for short, they sure have gained a lot of media coverage in the recent past, haven't they? They are battery operated devices that heat up nicotine into a vapor that can be inhaled. Now they have much fewer toxins than cigarettes do and it's likely less risky than continuing to smoke cigarettes chronically but they are not FDA approved so far and still require further research to determine how effective they really are and to de determine also their long-term risks as current studies are just inconclusive and conflicting. We also need more studies to determine how they stack up and compare with the other seven medication options. But we do know that they are not safe for adolescents and young adults and pregnant women in addition to adults who aren't using any tobacco products and are simply vaping for the sake of vaping. Now, if you do decide to give it a shot, make sure that you do a complete 100% switch from cigarette smoking to e-cigs and not smoke and vape at the same time, which is not recommended. Now, not a medication, but I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention behavioral counseling. Behavioral counseling for smoking cessation has shown to increase the chances of quitting in studies. And this can be in person with a doctor, it can be with a group, or it can be over telephone via free hotlines. And you can reach this free hotline at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A final general note, we don't know how effective medications are in adolescents, in those who smoke five or less cigarettes a day, and in those who use smokeless tobacco. And they are not FDA approved for, for pregnant women as well. So these people should most especially consult their doctor regardless of any of the medication options that we've discussed here. So hopefully you have enough information to take back to your doctor at your next visit so that you can review what is best for you personally together. If you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, give it a like, hit that red subscribe button along with that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may find it useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy and I'll catch you next time.